Neil. New day, new chapters, new verses, new setup. <laughs> Let's dig in to verses 1 through 5. There are a couple sections here, but they all kind of come together in a way I think really is poignant. So let's dig in. Welcome with open arms, fellow believers who don't see things the way you do, and don't jump all over them every time they do or say something you don't agree with, even when it seems they are strong in opinions but weak in the faith department. Remember, they have their own history to deal with. Treat them gently. For instance, a person who has been around a while might be well convinced that he can eat anything on the, ta on the table, while another, with a different background, might assume he should only be a vegetarian and eat accordingly. But since both are guests at Christ's table, wouldn't it be terribly rude if they fell to criticizing what the other ate or didn't eat? God, after all, invited them both to the table. Do you have any business crossing people off the guest list or interfering with God's welcome? If there are corrections to be made, or manners to be learned, God can handle that without your help. Or say in one person thinks that some days should be set aside as holy, and another thinks that each day is pretty much like any other. There are good reasons either way, so each person is free to follow the convictions of conscience. And I think it should be, you know, not just conviction of conscience, but convictions of the Holy Spirit. He'll tell us how to do it. He'll tell us what to focus on, where to move, where we're needed, if we listen. And even if we listen, he don't tell us. It's just kind of whether or not we want to hear and obey. You know, I, I love the fact that this entire section is headed with cultivating good relationships. Because it is. It is the core idea of how we connect to each other. And I would argue that living with this kind of mercy helps us connect to God, too. You know, love God, love others. If we are living a life that welcomes in open arms and doesn't get focused on the right or the ritual or the behavior, but get instead gets focused on the relationship. You know, and I find myself thinking about the idea of conviction and, you know, the fact that we do try and help each other out. There are verses, you know, about how to handle it, go and talk to the person if they won't listen then bring a few people and if they still won't listen then bring it to the church you know, I tend to forget <laughs> but it's interesting to me that Paul says it right there that God will handle any corrections echoing when Jesus says judge not lest ye be judged to break out the King James version of it because that's not our job that is his he will handle that especially with believers. Our task, our joy, is to love, to welcome others with open arms. Not because anyone deserves it, but because it's the right thing to do. Deserve has nothing to do with it. Mercy, grace, compassion, truth, love, they're more than just words. They're how we're called to live. And we are called to live opening our arms, just as Christ opened his arms for us. Not just in the literal sense, when they were spread wide on the cross, but in the literal sense of when he welcomes us as a hug and a loving embrace, when our Abba sees the prodigal son or daughter and welcomes his home. That's the beauty of it. Not whether or not somebody should focus on meat or not focus on meat. Yes, there is discretion. Absolutely. You know, it is a woe unto those who would cause their brother or sister to stumble. But that right there is where it takes even more opportunity for us to get to know each other. To know what we can and shouldn't share. Based on how that person's walk is coming. And not just theirs, but our own that it is the beauty of the walk, the beauty of connecting to each other, that we can treat each other gently, that we can treat each other with the love that he shows us. Because I'll be honest with you, there are times when I think about, you know, when I try to be honest, this is colloquialisms, but I think about 
you know, the difficulties about days and the Sabbath and things like that. I mean, we have examples of it in the Christian community about these difficulties that we let turn into things that divide. You know, in this world of opinions where we all broadcast how we feel and think and what we're going through, it's sad that we don't actually process it out to interact with others, to be embraced. And sometimes I wonder if the Christian community en masse knows how to welcome. I know that there are so many out there of you who do, and that fills me with hope and it fills me with joy. Because it is about the love that we are shown and the love that we can share. The person who thinks to only eat veggies, cool. God made them, enjoy them. The person who's only okay to eat meat, cool. God made it, enjoy it. Trying to find a quiet spot in the city is not the easiest. <laughs> At least with the new setup. I hope that we can dig into the beauty of life and the fact that we are all invited to Christ's table. That it's all His invitation and us accepting, coming in and living a life that shows we accept what He truly says. That He loves us, that He died for us, that He was raised to life for us. As, you know, I, I'll give you an example. And admittedly for a bit here, I'm kind of doing the whole wrestling about the don't want to trip anybody up. Because there are these things out there that we do have to take wisdom to use and interact with. But like my earrings, the symbol here is from Magic the Gathering. It's just a card game. It's what it's done with it. Because there are some those that, you know, have to avoid it like the plague and, and are terrified of it. Me personally, it's an opportunity for fellowship. I welcome Christ in nothing else. And so it is not a tool of the enemy, it is a place of connection. Where I can laugh and love and interact with people, where I can share who he is. And I've met people who will never touch it and would burn them instantly. I've known people who would laugh about that fact because there are Bible verses on some editions of cards. So. It strikes me that it is not necessarily about the behaviors in the sense of, you know, religious rote, for lack of better expression. And it's all about the relationship. God will convict what needs to be convicted on. He always will. He always does. Not with guilt, but with conviction. There is a difference. That he doesn't condemn, but he gives us an opportunity to learn. And that gives an opportunity for even more mercy and even more love. Because either way you cut it, the vegetarian or the carnivore, the person who is keeping a Sabbath holy, wherever it happens to follow, or those who don't, it's not about that. It's about the relationship with their father. Digging in and letting our Abba teach us not only what it means to be human, but what it looks like to be truly human as he is. The human one, Jesus. Perfectly God and perfectly human. His life, an example of what it is to live. Something I hope we do. Something I hope we can do fully. Living in love welcoming others not for anything other than it's just the right thing to do when we want to do it I may I, I know it may seem odd but I promise you as his love enters in it gets easier to share as his love fills our heart it's easier to pour out because he pours in. So let us live in love. And let us embrace the fact that we are all invited to Christ's table. He 
will tell us where to sit. Because he's the one who invited us in the first place. Let's dig in. The rest of Romans is going to be there because he gives quite a few examples, to be honest. Go through them. And then tell me what you think of Hosea 6.6. 6. I desire mercy over sacrifice, a knowledge of God over, well, to be honest, the religious behaviors. Because it's not about a religion. It's about a relationship. It's not about calisthenics set to a deity. It's about embracing the fact that we are so loved that the creator of the universe would die for us because he knows how broken we are and wants us to be there with him. And if that's the kind of love he offers and we truly embrace it, then having open arms for the opinionated is a lot easier. Not because we put up with the opinions, not because we even really condone or condemn the opinions, but just because the person who has them is invited to the table too. And the history they're dealing with and the history we are dealing with are God's to handle as he refines us and makes us new. I look forward to seeing you guys tomorrow to get again to verse, well, 6 through 9. God bless, and here's hoping that the quality can just keep getting better. I'll see you guys then. God bless, and may his favor be upon you.